lyrics for Bravo Giovanni, then you'll know who our special guest is today, a man of vast talent who sometimes refers to himself as a handsome gargoyle. He is the unique Ronnie Graham. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Um, Ronnie Graham from Philadelphia, are you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Every time I hear Ronnie Graham, lyrics, songwriter, uh, actor, um, upstairs and downstairs, Julius Monks, New Faces. Why does that stick in my mind only, not other things like movies? Because uh, you've done a lot. I've done a lot. Well, I think that you, uh, when you mentioned New Faces or Upstairs at the Downstairs, they were beginnings, and uh, I think beginnings are always mighty important. Things. Yes. And beginnings I, for Ronnie Graham, Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> what was the beginnings for Ronnie Graham? Well, I was born into a family of vaudevillians. Really? Father. My father became an agent, but he was Steve Graham. My mother's name was Florence Mary Sweeney. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. And she had two sisters, Belle and Edna, and they were known as the Fanchone sisters. People used to adopt French names for their acts then. Uh -huh. And my father and my mother met on the road, and he said, would you like to do an act with me? And she left their act and did an act with my father, and they uh -huh. got married, and that was how So that you happened. grew up born in the trunk, Ronnie. Yes, born in the trunk with a lot of performers around the house. Okay, first Nothing time. but encouragement. First time on stage, Ronnie Graham. Yes. Let's go. Let's go take Judy Garland, born in the truck. First time, Ronnie Graham on stage. Fifth grade, in uh, Ridge Avenue School, Darby, Pennsylvania, in a <laughs> show called Santa's White Whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> I came out as the court jester, uh -huh. and I sang, "Oh, what is the matter in Toyland? There's something going wrong, no doubt." Uh -huh. I heard first a shout and all that, and uh -huh. uh, I almost didn't do that show. There was a teacher who taught English there, and Mrs. Coffin was her uh -huh. name, just like the, the box we all are going to wind up in. Right. And she was this wonderful lady. You know, everybody has a teacher who did something in there for, for their life. I think everybody So does. she did something for you. Well, what she did, I went to the first reading of the play. I still have a slight stammer, but at that time I stuttered quite a lot. And uh, the first reading of the play, we had the first reading of the play, I stuttered all over the place, and right. everybody laughed. I left early, went home to the third floor of my house where I lived, and my mother was uh, just, you don't have to do it, it's okay, just don't, right. and I was heartbroken, I was crying. Suddenly downstairs, oh, uh, about an hour later, I heard Mrs. Uh, Stringer, that's my real name, Ronald Graham Stringer. Stringer. Miss, uh, she said, Mrs. Stringer, this is Mrs. Coffin, and I want to see Ronald right now. Uh -huh. No, don't come up with me, I want to be with him. And she brought up two scripts, and she said, all right, Ronald, we're going to read the play. Let's go. <laughs> and I don't want any nonsense, no tears, nothing. Let's just get busy. Uh -huh. And she led me back, and I, and I found out that I could do it on the stage, uh -huh. even though I stuttered in, alone and, and uh, in class and all, I didn't on the stage. Yeah. And that's, but bless her heart, because I was not going to go back. I was never going to do never. it. Never. So you left Philadelphia, went to New York. How old uh, were you when you left? Uh, when you went to New York? Uh, I was twenty-eight. Oh, going on twenty-eight. Really? Oh, yes, that yes. Run? Well, yeah. I, I, I got. I was in the army for four and a half years. Right. And I got out in nineteen forty-five, and I had a band, had a, a jazz band. You had a jazz band. Yeah, because okay. I'm a jazz pianist. Right. That was what I really wanted to be for quite a while. I listened to Fats Waller and all those right, guys, right. and I wanted to <laughs> sing in funny songs. And I formed a band called Ronnie Graham and the four guys and right. we worked all the clubs around Philly and in Atlantic City and New, New Jersey right. everywhere and uh, I think you must know this man uh, uh, I can't remember his name was not awful uh, in Philly or New York yes in Philly he owned a place called the rendezvous the rendezvous and, and, okay and go ahead. also not the Latin Quarter he was no. uh, 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 Goober Ford and Gross okay Goober no I don't uh, you didn't know but anyway he had this club <clears throat> And he said, listen, you're a very funny guy. Why don't you just uh, want to work as a single sometime? Let me know and come in uh -huh. here and do your songs. Uh -huh. So one, at one particular place, I needed the money uh -huh. to work as a single. I could make more. Right. Uh, I was married at the time, and a child was coming, my first right. child. So I went, and I said, okay, and I worked there. And he, 
uh, it was kind of a rough crowd. Gangsters, uh, mafia the mafia, yeah, of tough, course. Tough, and but you, they're the great audience, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, they are fantastic. Yeah, I know. If you're know funny, yeah. you're funny. If you're funny, yes. And at first, I got scared of them, and I said, "I better." He said, "Look, we're going to. I want you to stay here as long as you want to stay. Right. I want you to build your act here." So I built this big act, and his partner Frank Ford. Suddenly, one time, he said, "Listen." There's a club in New York called Cafe Society Downtown. I want you to go to Cafe Society and do an audition. Mm -hmm. So I went up and did an audition, and I got the job. What did you do, Ronnie Graham, the, or for the audition? For what the audition? One of your numbers? One of my numbers, yes. One of your numbers? Uh -huh. Comedy numbers? It was a comedy number, yes. Yeah. So you did one of them. Yeah, so I go did ahead. one of the comedy numbers, and that went over very big with the audience. It was uh -huh. called a, a live audition in those days. Right. So I got the job, and I went back and worked there for... Uh, Three months, uh -huh. and then I came back, and he said, you want to go back to New York again? Frank Ford did. I said, yes. He said, okay, I got you an audition for Julius Monk at the Rue Van Bleu. This, uh, this was 1950. No, 1949. 49. I went and auditioned for Julius Monk, and I got the job with him. And uh, then when I was there at the Rue Van, uh, Imogene Coker, who was a friend of right. Julius, Julius Monk, came in. She had been in the original New Faces in 1934. She was, was the original in yes, 1934? Yes, she was, yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. She did a number called A Boy, A Girl, A Lamp Light with Henry Fonda, would you believe? Really? It was in New Faces in 1934. Uh -huh. And she said, <clears throat> I'm bringing in somebody to see you tonight. Don't, don't be nervous and be good, because he's going to love you. Uh -huh. So she brought in Leonard Silman. Who for New Faces. New Faces, yes. Right. And uh, he's... It was the biggest moment of my life, I think, up to that time. He called me to his table afterward. He said, I've been thinking about doing another New Faces. I do a show called New Faces. I've done them periodically. Uh -huh. And he said, hadn't done one for 10 years, and I'd like you to be the, uh, the nucleus of it and write as much material as you want and be the leading co comedian in it. Right. So, so you, wrote, it you wrote most of that material. In yeah, I, I wrote two-thirds of the show. Did you really? Yeah. That's, I, Ronnie. And uh, it was a very exciting time. And, so uh, you people auditioned those people for the show, like Eartha Kitts and Paul Lynn, and uh, were you there? Eartha, no. no. Leonard saw her in Paris working with Orson Welles as Helen of Troy. And, right, right. Uh, if, and, she and told so, me that, I remember. And, yeah, and, and she, she was hired. Robert Clary was working at La Vie en Rose, and he came in and did an audition for us, and we flipped. We said, uh -huh. yes, yes. Uh -huh. got, in fact, I wrote that whole song for him. Uh, Robert Clary. Lucky Pierre. Yeah. I wrote that just did because Is that yours? Is yeah, that? that's my song. It's one of my that favorites, you know, from the show. Oh, really? Lucky Pierre, yeah. yeah I, I wrote it over. He hated it, by the way. Robert did? Yeah, he did it first until he saw how well it went. Oh. But he did. He, he said, what kind of a French song is this? So I, I then we had uh, all the people that auditioned, uh, Little Carol Lawrence, she was Carol like Lawrence 17 was in years it? old then, yeah. She was 17, 18 years old then. Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn, yeah, he came in from Ohio. I just... Uh, Alice Ghostly? Alice Ghostly. Tell yes. me about Alice Ghostly. Alice Ghostly, she is one of the uh, she's great, great... She's being a nominated right now. Yeah, she, she, yes, yes, yes. She's she, great. She should be, and she's... That night, opening night with that show... Oh, oh, by the way, I must tell you about Out of Town. Right. It uh, was my hometown at the Forest Theater in Philly. In Philly. Philly. And I had a small following there, and I realized how small I saw it didn't fill the place. Mm -hmm. And we got nice reviews, but nobody came. There was shooting deer in the balcony. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we got good reviews, and we went to New York, and we did one paid preview, a theater party came. Right. And I did the opening lines, no laughs. Did the first sketch, no laughs. Really? And, and I mean, it was, it was half the audience came back. Right. They were talking during the show, and I thought, 16 months <laughs> I did uh -huh. this, uh -huh. and this is it. Uh -huh. And in fact, one of the stagehands walked across the stage and said, well, back to the nightclubs, huh, Ron? So, and you had to rewrite that whole show? No, that, we, we did it out of town. We did all the changes. Uh, John Murray Anderson, who staged the whole show, right. he made us cut 30 minutes out of it that we I didn't want to cut. He was very wise, and he re-routined the numbers. But that terrible night, John Murray Anderson came on the stage with us right. and said, listen, I'm an old man of 77, and I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I don't want you to be disheartened by what happened tonight. We have a hit. I don't know what size a hit, but we have a hit. How he did said, he know he had a hit? He just felt it or what? Yeah, he had seen what was going on in Philly, even though we had small audiences, right. and he knew it was there. 
And uh, he knew the brilliance of the talent, that we had brilliant talent up there. I mean, it was really astonishing uh -huh. how many good people there were in that show. You brought a clip from New Faces. Yes, I did. I would love to show. Oh, this is the this opening is clip. from the movie. This from is the, the movie? opening number. Yes, the opening number You did the movie, movie too, matter of fact. You've yes, all, oh, we all did the all movie. All did the movie. Yes, all did the movie out here. Yes. Let's show this clip okay. from the movie love of this. New Faces of 1952. Show. Yeah. I mean, oh. eight talented people. Yeah, astonishing. Astonishing. Eight talented people. I mean, the songs, Robert Clary's, and yeah. Eartha Kitt did Monotonous. Was yes, must. yes. Tell me about the evening of Monotonous when she, Eartha Kitt, she was telling me something about that. What happened that evening? She. I don't it was a that. big sensation. Oh, yes. Oh, the opening night. It was a big night, number. Yes. Oh, yes. Big Tell number. me about the opening night. Uh, opening night was like after that terrible night right. before. Right. We got in and. The first thing I had to say, there were pictures up on the stage. Right. There was a picture of Charlie Chaplin, a picture of, of uh, Clara Bow, a picture of N Nita Naldi, right. Theda Barra, all these. And Rin Tin Tin was down in the end line. And I, I <laughs> said, and I had come out with a script of the play, I said, so uh -huh. perishable are standards uh -huh. in the theater uh -huh. that of the eight old timers pictured uh -huh. here, only one seems to have suffered no loss in sophistication. <laughs> Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> and I got this huge laugh and I knew we were on the way to something, because right. it was exciting the way they laughed. And then I introduced every every person in the cast. Right. And uh, then Alice introduced me, uh, who I was, at, when I was, I'd introduced right. everybody. And then we all sang the opening number. And from then on, it was, and, and Paul was at his best that night. Alice was superb. There was something so magical about her that night that in fact, I got the last bow. She got the next to Paul was uh -huh. third, and then she got next to last bow, and I took the last bow, uh -huh. and I went and got her and brought her down again in the uh -huh. audience room because she was so. It you're was like the heroine of the you're evening. You're sitting there with that excitement, still remembering uh, that moment. It must have been great. Yeah, Paul never forgot Paul it. Paul Lynn. Yeah, but at one what kind time, of guy was really Paul Lynn? Some Paul, people. Paul was. I, I wish he was happier about his success. He was he such wasn't a successful happy. man. No, he wasn't happy. And he had this great humor and, and, and uh -huh. all this going for him, and he never seemed to enjoy it enough. I tell you when he enjoyed it. When we got on, like the Merv Griffin show, all the new faces people got on, June Carroll and You all Alice got into it? Yeah. And that's whenever he would be around his new faces people, he would warm up. That was a special moment to Paul. Paul started in New Faces. That was his yeah, that's big, big, yeah. big he worked break. one little club in New York. Yeah. But when I tell you what he did, he called from Ohio. He was back in Ohio. Right. And he said, "You don't know me, but he told Linda Shimon, I'm good, and I want to come in. I'll I'll pay my own way. I want to say, do something for you.' Is that what he did? Yes, what he did. He said, "I'm good." So when you really have talent and you believe in yourself, you should go out and get it there. Oh, that's yeah. the way yes. to do it. Is that that's right, Ronnie? The, yeah. I th I think, especially when you're young, because it's the years when you have the least. Years right. and go grab it. Go grab it. I yes. wouldn't. I wouldn't stop for anything. New York is exciting those days, wasn't uh, it? The best. Broadway. The best. Bro Broadway was. I was lucky to get in on that. I'm, I'm glad I got in on that kind of excitement because mm -hmm. it was the time of the dress up for the uh -huh, openings uh -huh. and let's they were exciting. You know, let's go to Julius Monk's upstairs okay. and downstairs. <laughs> okay. What a room! Yes. Ronnie yes. Graham. I used to come in there and I used to see you. Uh. That room. Everybody, the most chicest room in New York. Yes, it was a wonderful place to work. Chic. Yes, absolutely chic. Why did it make it so chic? Tell me about that. Why? Why? Julius was the was the uh, the thing behind that. Julius was behind my success of getting into New Faces. He, yes, because yes. I came up with my act, uh -huh. I auditioned for him, right. and uh, he said, "Come back a week before you open. You must right. come back here, and we must spend some hours together." Uh -huh. So I went up with him. He said, "Now I'm going to tell you, you have a wonderful act." 
but you have another half of an act that's not wonderful, and we're going to have to start zipping that out because it just isn't, does not go right with the other stuff. It doesn't measure up to what you can do. And he taught me to always do my best, and taught everybody that to always do your best. Whatever you do. Yeah, whatever, whatever you, you do. do. Don't do the, take the other stuff, throw it out, you know, wow. but always aim for the best. And he, I was, I was astonished because I said, but some of these things are going very big. He said, in Philadelphia, they're going big. They're not going to go big here. And once I defied him and did one of them, uh -huh. and it bombed the death, it just didn't measure up uh -huh. to the other material. He was a uh -huh. great mentor. He still is my mentor. I speak Do we have a Julius Monk out there in 1993? Uh, Think, look, because he, this was going back in the 40s and the 50s. We need one, we I'll need, tell you that. We, we do, need, don't we? We need somebody who can lead people like that. It's, I had an experience, it's not going to be me, but at UCLA I directed a play by Alan Akeborn right. called the other, How the Other Half Loves. And I told them when we started, I said, I'm going to drill you so hard you, <laughs> you're going to uh -huh. hate me. I said, but you're, going to, you're dealing with a farce here that is of such a, a, a complications uh -huh. that it's got to look easy. You must, uh -huh. It must look like you're not working even though you're 